Grace and peace to you from God our Father and our Lord and Saviour, Jesus Christ. Rejoice in the Lord always. Really? Sometimes people plain and simply don't feel like rejoicing. When you have an argument with your spouse, you don't feel like rejoicing. When your teenager has had a car accident and is in hospital, you don't feel like rejoicing. When your doctor tells you it's cancer and it's terminal, you don't feel like rejoicing. In the middle of the bad times in your life, the last thing you need to hear is someone telling you that as a Christian, you should always be rejoicing. Or that as a Christian, you should always be thinking positive thoughts. So what is Paul telling us when he tells us to rejoice in the Lord always? Is he saying that you should always be happy and full of joy even when bad things happen? Well, Paul's not telling us to pretend that everything's okay. Christians are not supposed to be so elevated above real life that they're untouchable. Paul isn't asking you to rejoice in the terrible things that life throws at you, but rather to rejoice in the gracious blessings that Jesus brings you even in the midst of the troubles of this life. Paul is writing from prison. He's no stranger to beatings, false accusations, hunger, nakedness, shipwreck, long periods in jail. But what gets him through the tough times is knowing that no matter how bad things get, God is on his side. Through even the darkest times, Jesus is near you. By God the Son becoming a human being, God showed us that he is not somewhere up there watching us from a distance. Instead, through Jesus, God is Emmanuel. God with you in the muck. God with you in the good times and the bad. God with you for better or worse. That's the surprise of God's grace. And the spirit of Jesus lives in you. And that means God feels what you feel. God experiences what you experience. In the midst of the worst of circumstances, you're not alone because the Lord is with you. So rejoice in the Lord always. And since you're not alone, since through Jesus, no matter what happens, God will always be with you, you can live differently to those who don't have faith in Jesus. Every day you can experience God's grace, knowing that no matter what's happening around you, someone who's given his life for you is right there beside you. And not only is God with you, but he listens to you, which means you can ask him for your, what you need. Ask God, knowing that he is generous and loving, and that as your father, he wants to give you all that is good for you. And as you ask, trust that God in his wisdom, love and mercy will give you what you need. Now, maybe he won't give you what you think you need. And maybe he won't give you what you want. But in his wisdom, he will give you what he knows you need. And knowing in faith that God will only give you what is good for you, thank him for his love, mercy and generosity. You can also rejoice about your future. Now, over the years, I've met many couples who are preparing for marriage, and usually they're really excited about the wedding day. For them, the wedding is the beginning of a lifelong commitment of living together with each other in a loving relationship. And yet often in the months and weeks leading up to the wedding, there can be a lot of stress. Off, there can be problems with flowers, the caterers, limousines, maybe even the soon-to-be in-laws. Once a bride had put on a couple of kilos just due to the stress of leading up to the wedding. And she had to have some major work done on her dress a, a couple of days before the big day. And she was understandably very upset. And yet in the midst of all of this, 
as long as couples can keep sight of the future, they can get through their troubles. <clears throat> as long as they keep the goal in mind and remember that no matter what happens with the dress, the cars, even the caterers, the most important thing is the vows and the commitment they're making to each other. The longer they can remember, the more they can remember that, the more they can still have joy, even in the midst of all the issues that may come up. In the midst of that, they can still have the joy of knowing where they're heading in the future. And that's what it's like for us Christians. We too know our future. <clears throat> we know that God has adopted us as his dearly beloved children and that he's preparing a place and time for us when we will be united with him in eternal peace and joy. We know that all the troubles of this life are only temporary. And there's something far more important and joyful waiting for us. Therefore, for us too, no matter what happens here and now, we can rejoice always in our future as God's chosen people. People whose names are written in the book of life. And the more we listen to Jesus and trust in his voice, the more we'll also experience his peace, even in the midst of our messy lives. Despite all this, when something bad happens, it's very easy to become consumed by it to such a degree that it changes our perception of everything else in our lives. It's as though we've put on dirty glasses and, and everything we look at is tainted. And soon even the good things in our lives stop looking good or we just can't see them at all. This is when remembering who we are as God's beloved children helps us to regain our perspective. And remembering that no matter what happens, God loves us and is on our side. This is when fixing our eyes on Jesus and remembering what he has done for us, continues to do for us and will do for us into the future, helps us to remember that not everything is bad in our lives. This is when we remember that Jesus is embracing us and will never let go. And that is why even in the midst of the bad things that happen, we can rejoice in the Lord. We can rejoice in Christ and experience the peace of God. Amen.